discussion to see volunteers take prevention measures to avoid the spread of the epidemic. Japan's volunteers started to support homeless people since the financial crisis in 2008. Welcome to Dial Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. In response to the novel coronavirus, the Kaohsiung Jing the house taking measures, from limiting the engine's waste to mask and sanitation, and even the cafeteria being closed for the time being, and the lunch is delivered straight from the kitchen in reusable containers, the volunteers are not taking any chance with the epidemic. Everyone who sets foot inside the Kaohsiung Jingsi Hall needs to have their temperature checked. These preventative measures make us feel safe. I think this can help with one more step to protection. The frontline volunteers who are in charge of receiving guests are learning how to use the infrared thermometer. All the volunteers have donned protective masks and administrative staff quickly puts up signs to warn about the epidemic. And even the entrance and exits are being limited. We're limiting our entrances for epidemic prevention, so we're locking this door. We only have three exits open, one at the front and two from the basement which reaches the large hall, which are the two doors on the east and west side. We are limiting it to three exits in hope of decreasing the danger to the lowest. The dining area is also temporarily closed, with the staff members being asked to only pick up their filled lunch containers during mealtime. Of course it's more work, but it's a special circumstance. We need to protect ourselves before we can help others. The Gaoshan Jing Hall raises their epidemic prevention measures as a way to help put an end to the invasion. In order to prevent the novel coronavirus epidemic to affect the safety and health of members in the Tsuji family, the Northern District Epidemic Prevention Coordinate Center was officially launched on January 30th to prepare for the antivirus fight. Volunteers carefully monitor visitors' body temperature via the infrared ray. This machine is once again used after SARS. Tsuji volunteers in the hospital are fully prepared to fight this battle of epidemic prevention. Okay. The Northern Chapter Epidemic Prevention Coordinate Center was launched officially on January 30th to conduct thorough epidemic prevention work. We will do more vocation and prevention work, focus on our care recipients and solitary seniors. I suggest that we should carefully evaluate before organizing any activities and see if it's necessary to host. If we must host it, then we should keep it under 300 participants. Every team sends representatives to participate in the discussion to spread the correct information and hopes to help the public. We're concerned that if every recycling station have enough thermometers, masks and alcohol because all these are necessary. We also try to figure out how many are we short of so we can purchase more as soon as possible. Volunteers pour the alcohol into small packages to disinfect the building. This time, everyone in the Tsuji family is full guarded to face the epidemic challenge. Novel coronavirus is spreading globally and there have been 13 confirmed cases in Singapore as of January 31st. The Singaporean government has implemented policies to prevent the spread of the virus. Tsuji affiliates in Singapore have also taken measures to prevent the worsening of the epidemic. As the Singapore government implements policies to prevent the spread of the virus, Tsuji affiliates in Singapore have also taken preventative measures. We measure their body temperature and ask them if they are coughing or having a fever, cold or asthma. Most importantly, we ask them if they have been to China. If they are fine, we will let them to go see doctors. Everyone's safety is very important. The Chinese Medicine Free Clinic Center and Lakeside Family Medicine Clinic have stationed staff to measure visitors' body temperature and ask about their travel history. In addition, the medical team has set up a quarantine area. 
This was originally a consolation room. Due to the epidemic, we have organized and simplified the consolation room. There's a bed and simple necessities on the table. There have been 13 confirmed cases of novel coronavirus patients in Singapore as of noon on January 31st. Despite that, doctors point out people do not have to be fearful. They should avoid crowded areas and must protect themselves. Do not panic. It's important to drink a lot of water and have abundant rest. The most important thing is washing hands. After you touch public surface, you should wash your hands with soap. After cleaning your hands, it will be okay. Besides the medical affiliates, Great Love Kindergarten also takes preventative measures. The children need to have the temperature measures, limbs and mouth checked before entering the classrooms. The teachers also teaches the correct way to wash their hands to fight against the spread of virus. Singapore city volunteers have been caring for Miss Hu, who is nearly 100 years old. Miss Hu has gallstones due to her age. The doctors don't recommend surgery and could only prescribe medication to help ease her pain. Dima members' regular visits to care for them has really helped the daughter, Ho Ni Ma, see the good in society once more. Though it's their first time meeting each other, Ho Nick Wa is able to chat with this elderly with ease. Today, Ho has joined city volunteers on home visitations. I enjoy going to their homes and getting to know them. We're not here to just care for the sick, but also the caregiver. The caregiver should be given more attention because I know how they feel. Knowing the stress of being a caregiver, Ho's mother was once very sick as well. As a caregiver, seeing the family member in such a sick condition, our mental health is really on the brink of collapse. When city volunteers came to care for us, I was really moved. They hugged me, even the medical staff hugged me. In the past, we come visit her. She would be pretty stressed and wasn't in a good place mentally. She was exhausted. At that time, her mother had refused to eat for a few weeks already. The Tsuchi Home Care Medical Team's regular visit has helped ease the mother's condition and also gave the daughter some breathing space. <laughs> it's difficult to take care of my mother on my own, but I'm doing the best I can. I think she should go out of the house more as she's really happy when she does. The joy on her face is very difficult to describe because it's not the type of expression she's used to having. During the 99th birthday celebration for Miss Hu, it's evident that her health is better than ever. While Ho is appreciative of the time she has with her mother, she also hopes to spread this type of love to other families in need. If I can do more than I will because I want people to know they aren't alone, there are others out there who care about you. Beginning March of 2009, city volunteers in Japan have served hot meals for the homeless in Yoyoshi Park. The service has continued for the past nearly 11 years, twice a month. The act of compassion started after the 2008 financial crisis, as there were many who lost their jobs, and city began caring for the jobless people. During the snow, in the cold, the hot meal is just what the heart and stomach needs. One of the brothers once said he saw a homeless at the park and wanted to give him 5,000 yen, but he wouldn't accept it. But the day we had hot meals for them and they gladly accepted it and he saw in their faces how heartfelt the warmth was. Maybe it's due to their upbringing, but when they are met with setbacks or failure, they refuse to go back home. They rather find a corner in the bustling city and be lost. Suji Japan Chapter is here to provide a bit of love and warmth. They began with hot meal distributions on March 2, 2009 at Yoyoki Park in Tokyo. The way the homeless would line up in an orderly way has made a deep impression in the volunteers' hearts. When we see the older homeless each month, they were extremely sad because we know they won't ever get another job again because of their age. But if we see new people, especially if they're younger, it's more heartbreaking because you know someone new doesn't have a job. The hot meal distribution at Yoyogi Park happens twice a month, whether it is the hot summer or cold winter. 
In these past few years, many volunteers have joined the distribution event. I'm here to give. Blessings have always been given to me, so it feels good to give back. Because I like to be a part of the Tsuji community and um, promoting these uh, to show, we show that we're all one world and um, we're all brothers and sisters and when some of us have less, then it's our duty to, um, to help spread the uh, the goodness between all of us, and um, yeah, and that's why I come here. The more it rains, the more homeless people will be here. It's a good and meaningful experience. It's been nearly 11 years now, and the homeless friends come and go. But Suji volunteers never forget their initial aspiration of respect for sentient beings and spreading love like it's the norm. The food is always made with the Japanese cuisine in mind as Suji hopes they won't have to worry about their next meal. Among countless homeless people, there is Kashiwagi Fuyuki. After receiving Suji's care, he took the time to get to know the organization and really resonated with the foundation's value and especially Dharma Master Zheng Yan. He made a vow to visit Taiwan to see the master and spend two years saving up money to fulfill his dream. Wearing a backpack and picking up garbage around the park, this is Kashiwagi Fuyuki. When Suji volunteers hosted events, Kashiwagi is also in the crowd, praying silently. His affinity with Suji began in 2009 when he received a bowl of hot food from the volunteers. After that meal, he had a wish in his heart. <laughs> I think the master must be very busy. I just want to stand there amongst everyone in the crowd and listen to her live in person. That will be enough for me, as I normally watch her on TV. Kashiwagi worked hard to make money and spent two years doing odd jobs, such as standing in line for people to buy limited edition items. He endured the terrible wind and cold rain just to save up for a plane ticket. I don't need to speak to Master directly. Seeing her from afar is good enough for me. On March 8, 2014, Kashiwagi arrived in Taiwan on his Tsuji route finding journey. I thought about what questions I would ask before, but once I arrived in Taiwan, all those have been forgotten. I am now just a blank piece of paper, ready to absorb all of the Tsuji spirit and the Master's teachings. Stepping foot inside Suji's spiritual home, Kashiwagi fulfilled his dream in Hualien. When he returned to Japan, he continued to don the Grey Volunteer's uniform to contribute what he could until January of 2017, when he took his last breath. Zhe Suji volunteers were especially busy prior to the end of the Lunar New Year as they went around helping their care recipients. Some were fixing their lights while others went to help clean up a home, ensuring they had a good start to the Lunar New Year. The empty lot in front of the home is filled with miscellaneous items and the yard is growing weeds. This is the home of Suji care recipient Tang Tai Ni. The volunteers are here prior to the end of the Lunar Year to help them clean up. To weed out the grass, the volunteers first use a handheld grass trimmer, then use their hands to pull out the roots. It took them a lot of effort to clean up the yard. I'm so grateful to the volunteers for their help because we are all not able to clean up. Just as the care recipient said, after his parents passed away, both he and his brother suffered a stroke. Only his sister could take care of the enormous task of the household chores. With the volunteers' visit, it gave their sister the ability to breathe. When you see the volunteers normally, they just answer your question, that's it. But the volunteers will care about you more and remind you about things and ask after your health. The Johor Baru volunteers also visited Yuan Heng Kuang's home. As Yuan sells recyclables for a living, his home is piled up with recyclables he can't bear to part with. Thus, volunteers help him clear out a few things for his health. It feels good to be able to help another. 
你开心吗？今天？开心啊！开心啊！ Dialysis patient Tim Taosung lives alone and has lived without lights in his bedroom for a really long time. The volunteers made sure to fix the lights before the end of the lunar year so he doesn't have to sleep in the living room for the lunar new year. In Fujian, China, there is an elderly couple who lives in an old and dilapidated house. Last year, city volunteers have helped renovate the old residence for them, but the effect has not been satisfactory. Later, the government has given permission for the family to build an extra floor so the elderly couple can move there. Let's join them on the moving day. The roof tiles of the dilapidated house are about to fall, and there are much straw and tree branches in the house. 84-year-old Grandpa Wu and his wife have been staying in this house for nearly half a century. If my wife leaves the world before I do, she is blessed. If I leave first, she will suffer more than when I am alive. <laughs> Grandpa Wu cannot hold back his tears because he feels that he has not taken good care of his other half. City volunteers have been looking for a new residence for the couple since November of last year. Later, they got the government's permission to build an extra floor in the couple's son's house. This way, the seniors can live with their son and grandchild. As their son, I was not able to accompany my parents and fulfill filial duties. I'm always running around outside. I really appreciate you guys, and I am thankful of the government. The house construction took two and a half months. The volunteers can often to see its progress. The Wu family is looking forward to its completion. I hope that after the house is completed, the two seniors can move here. I can then clean up the place for my mother-in-law. That would be better. Yeah, yeah. With everyone's expectations, the new house was completed before the Lunar New Year. On the day the seniors move into the house, the volunteers brought gifts and their best wishes. The daughter, who lives far away, has returned to perform a feet washing ceremony on her mother. As their daughter, I felt helpless. I need to take care of my own family, and I've moved far away after getting married. Therefore, I'm happy that they have moved here. I feel at ease now. The family is also feel at ease. On the day the seniors move into the new house, Grandpa Wu's younger brother, younger sister, and neighbors, as well as volunteers, have come to celebrate. They enjoyed a reunion meal together. When we are alive, we should do things to help other people. Coming to this world, we are only here for a period of time. Having the opportunity to help the less fortunate people is a blessing. The son puts on a spring couplet written by his father. This family is finally being reunited with the best wishes of the volunteers. 67-year-old solitary senior Tsai Weiguo lives in Xiamen's Gulang Island. For the past few decades, his home has no toilet. To relieve himself, he has to travel 20 minutes to a public restroom. City volunteers felt bad for him and before the Lunar New Year helped install a toilet for him to use in his house. This narrow room reeks of urine from the floorboards, as some find it hard to enter. The Suji volunteer picks up a pair of pants where an accident occurred. Wei Guo couldn't wait. He's often like this. So we thought we need to install a toilet for him to solve his problems going to the toilet. The location is Shaman's Gulang Island, where 67-year-old Tsai Wei Guo has been living for the past few decades without a toilet in his home. Whenever he has to relieve himself, he needs to travel 20 minutes to a public restroom, but sometimes he can't wait. Sometimes I can't wait and I pee my pants, and then I need to wash them. To solve his bathroom problem, Zhiji volunteers over the Lunar New Year holiday brought a plumber to install a toilet. However, putting in a toilet in this space, which is less than 10 square meters, takes a lot of skill, but they were committed to the task. Your electric drill failed today. Did you think of giving up? No, I didn't, because he needed help. Right, it was more troublesome to use these hand tools. But this mission is inspired by compassion. It is not easy for this old man, so it is nature that I wanted to honor him. 
Aside from the mason who helped out, an electrician also had to come to Zhang's house to redo his electrical lines. Some of the people living here are very wealthy. There are few who don't even have a toilet to use. Doing this before the Lunar New Year for him and letting him use the toilet in his home will make him very happy. After installing the toilet, Ziji volunteers invite him to use it, and his face is full of smiles. Because of your help, he can finally live in peace this year. So I want to thank all the Ziji brothers and sisters. Because you put in toilet, there is no smell anymore. Last time there was a smell, but now it's gone. Ziji volunteers have given Mr. Tai a wonderful gift of a new toilet, which has actually improved the overall environment. Most importantly, this elderly man will no longer have to worry about using the toilet. A Karasipan in Sichuan province, Wen Shiyong, has lost his left side vision and has no stable job to raise his family. Though the government gave him a new house after his old house was ruined, he can't move in due to inability to pay the gas bill. Seeing his situation, Sichu provided subsidies for him and helped his family to move into a new home. The valley is colder than the plains during the winter. Wen Shiyong has been living under a plastic trap with his family. When it rains in the summer, the water will leak from here. When the lightning strikes, it's all flooded here. Wen Shiyong's old house was ruined and the government built a new house for him. However, he was unable to pay for the gas fee, so he couldn't move into the new home. When he's walking down the stairs, he said that I don't understand his pain. He said that he didn't know what to do, but can only drink and smoke to try to get rid of his worries. Zijivan Chiu Liu Yong is his elementary school classmate, so he fell for him. Wen has lost vision in his left eye and has no ability to raise his family. Hence, Ziji has reached out to give him financial aid, so as well as inviting local people to help. On the day they moved into the new house, volunteers brought some furniture and living supplies to them from Chengdu. The children of the Wen family were the happiest to see them. The rent decorated the new house and wore the new clothes together. The festive vibe has taken away their worries. All of people who came to help can all feel the warmth and love. Everyone's love and care has made this family filled with love. We all feel the abundant love. Now that this family has found a life, the father of the family has also found his strength again. I'm feeling more and more energetic now because it's amazing to have a new house. Hualien Ziji Medical Center can now test the novel coronavirus within six hours in the virus lab. Take a look and see you next time.